means, my friends, patriots, lovers of democracy, truth and justice, believers in peace, freedom, and the American way. Tom Hartman here with you. And uh, with us for our first hour on this uh, Wednesday, first hour Wednesday, is Congressman Mark Pocan, the uh, first vice chair of the, Congre of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, represents the uh, state of Wis uh, the second district of the state of Wisconsin. His website, Pocan, P-O-C-A-N.house.gov. You can tweet him at rep, R-E-P, as in representative, rep Mark Pocan, M-A-R-K-P-O-C-A-N. And Congressman, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Tom. Glad to be here. It's always great to have you with us. So yesterday I was going off on this rant. I'm on the uh, the Congressional Progressive Caucus's mailing list, and mm -hmm. and uh, I got this email uh, yesterday, one day before, and another one today about the new budget that you guys just laid out. It's actually a good, solid budget. It's relatively non-controversial in terms of will it do what it says it'll do, uh, as has been the case with all the previous uh, Congressional Progressive Caucus budgets. And I challenged my uh, listeners and viewers to see if any corporate media in America picked up the story, because you guys held a big press conference yesterday. Um, I've seen no evidence that any did, but I, you're in the more in the middle of it. Um, but, but broadly speaking, you know, it, it, there was a bunch of you, I mean, a bunch of members of Congress. If, yeah. if, if 10 Republican Tea Partiers uh, from the House of Representatives had gotten together and offered a, a, a budget, uh, I, anything as comprehensive as this, or even something one-tenth as comprehensive as this, every single network would be falling all over themselves to cover it. There seems to be just this massive bias by the corporate media for um, corporate-owned Republicans. And I, I, it, this just boggles my mind. But anyhow, that's my rant. Um, feel free to address it if you'd like. But mostly, uh, you know, tell us about the people's budget. Yeah, well, uh, thanks, Tom. You know, and uh, you know, you're right. Uh, while we had some media there, it wasn't the the corporate media that covered it. Uh, we had, I, know, I bet you, a dozen members of Congress. Uh, you know, ten or twelve different groups that are supporting it out of the sixty plus that are endorsing the people's budget. Uh, you know, we had people from uh, Randy Weingarten from AFT. We had people from Planned Parenthood and NARAL. We had people from the Economic Policy Institute that helped us write it and do all the number crunching on it. Uh, and this is a, a big document, you know, so this is uh, as much as we talk about fighting the bad things. And I know we'll talk about it the next hour, like health care and other things that the Republicans are putting forward. Uh, this is our uh, alternative to not just say no to things, but put something positive forward. And in this case, this is a budget that uh, invests two trillion dollars in infrastructure, uh, something that you know we haven't seen any other plan that goes that extensively in fixing our roads and bridges, and schools and broadband and uh, water delivery systems and everything else across the country. Um, we changed the tax code significantly, making it more fair for the middle class and those aspiring to be in the middle class. Uh, we invest a trillion dollars in child care, essentially a universal uh, child care proposal for the, the nation. Uh, we talk about college affordability and debt-free college and free college uh, within the budget document. We uh, make it so prescription drugs are more affordable. Uh, which is something uh, also that I think uh, people have really asked for. We provide a pathway to single payer for states to be able to do that, uh, along with the Affordable Care Act. So we want to make sure the Affordable Care Act is strong, but make it even better by doing that. And we have comp comprehensive immigration proposals that actually make sense. We don't have a wall funding, uh, we, but we do have a pathway to citizenship and a lot of other things that are to make a lot of sense for people. And we expand Social Security and things like that. That's all in one document, but it's really... A lot of the things that we talk about every week on your show, Tom, uh, in one big document showing people that there is an alternative. You don't have to have Paul Ryan and uh, Donald Trump's policies that uh, if we can change things up a little bit, there is a real path forward that can work for working people in this country. And how do you pay for all this? There's a lot of different ways that we do it. Um, a lot of it is getting rid of corporate tax breaks that currently exist. Uh, some of it is a high-speed financial transaction fee. Uh, this is something they're doing in the European Union. Uh, we've put out there before, although we gave it a terrible name, the Robin Hood tax. I think that is a little confusing to people. But that's about $1.8 trillion. That almost alone pays for the infrastructure package investment that we have to create those good uh, paying family supporting jobs. Uh, so, and we, and we raise taxes on the wealthiest and we make sure that everyone else is getting a little better uh, break. So in the end, this is a plan that not only does all of these things, but if I remember right, in the previously, and, and this year we've yet to see the Republican budget, 
We also do more to help take care of things like the deficit that even the Republican proposals do while putting positive ideas forward. Yeah. How close is it to being a balanced budget? Um, I, I'd have to look at the exact numbers on it where that's at, Tom. I don't have that answer at the tip of my tongue, but I'll get it during this program for okay, you. Okay, fine. Um, uh, what else is on your mind? What are you, you're, you're, you're in the midst of all the, the screwy stuff going on in Congress. Paul Ryan this morning tweeted out, finally, proof that the MacArthur Amendment, you know, which uh, lets the states uh, uh, stick people with all 131 million of us with pre-existing conditions into high-risk pools that the AARP says could cost up to $25,000 a year. Uh, Paul Ryan says, ah, proof that we've covered pre-existing conditions. It's all wonderful. Vote for us. And apparently one of the Republicans, um, his name is escaping me right at the moment. But Upton. I'm sorry? Fred Upton. Fred Upton. Yeah, thank you for Michigan. Uh, Fred Upton had said, no way, I'm not going to vote for this. And now they're saying, OK, well, let's toss in $8 billion to subsidize the high-risk pools, uh, which is really just a variation on what Obamacare is doing, uh, except Obamacare doesn't jump through the hoop of the high-risk pools. It's, it's like they keep getting closer and closer to Obamacare, but they just keep trying to figure out ways to skim more and more money off the top for their bankster buddies. I, uh, anyhow, so what's going on in Congress this week? Yeah, you know, a lot. And what you said is all uh, correct. You know, so th th this is such an inside the beltway town that we forget that there's, you know, the rest of the country around us sometimes. And this is classic inside the beltway Republican thinking on this budget proposal. So uh, they now, here, here's my theory, Tom, because we're going to pass an omnibus today that basically doesn't do anything that Donald Trump wanted it to do and that the Republicans wanted to. And we've got year round Pell Grants in there. We've added two billion for NIH. We did all these other really decent things and we're not in charge. I think they realized in order to get that done, to keep government open until September 30th, since the Tea Party will never vote for anything, they needed to come and get our votes. We got a pretty good deal for considering everything that's out there, that they needed something for their base and they absolutely had to get this health care bill done. And Paul Ryan is desperate because he looked so pathetic uh, when it failed last time. So I think when Fred Upton and others, they didn't have the votes earlier this week, even with the MacArthur Amendment that uh, allowed states to basically say, if you have pre-existing conditions, you don't have to offer it. If state doesn't want to, uh, you don't have to include that in coverage or other essential health benefits. But now uh, this high risk pool, which Paul should know better because in Wisconsin, it didn't work well. It's very, very expensive to say you're going to have a little money for that. Exactly. That's the whole idea. If the Affordable Care Act made sure that 20 million people who didn't have access to health insurance now had it. And now we're realizing that's a little bit costly because not the healthy people didn't sign up. Their answer is like a pathetic uh, response because it's got all the same problems only intensified a hundredfold by having high risk pools that are gonna be very, very expensive and just a couple nickels to help cover the people who may have to go there for insurance when you drop 20 or more million people from getting health insurance. So this is like, it's a really, really bad idea. I think it's more about that big checking the box. We repealed Obamacare, uh, but the policy itself is a convoluted, uh, messy way that's gonna kick a lot of people off of uh, health insurance in this country. Yeah, not a good thing. We're talking with Congressman Mark Pocan for the hour. He will be taking your call. He, I'm done. You know, I, I've, had, I've asked my questions. Now it's your turn. Um, if you have a question for Congressman Pocan, uh, you know, uh, about anything, you know, anything, how Congress works, his opinions on things, uh, you know, what the news of the day is, give us a call at 202-808-9925. By the way, Congressman Pocan, yesterday I did a uh, half-hour survey where I had people call and uh, just, you know, uh, with uh, a word and a sentence why, uh, say who they think the, uh, should be the Democratic nominee for president in 2020. And um, uh, I think Elizabeth Warren got the most with nine votes. Uh, Bernie got seven. Um, this was out of maybe 60 altogether, something like that. But, you know, several people mentioned your name, too. So it's, it's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Uh, anyhow, Omar in Herndon, Virginia, you are on the air with Congressman Mark Pocan. Thanks for watching Free Speech TV. Omar, what's up? Yes, I would like to see Mrs. Pocan challenge Nancy Pelosi for, for, for the leadership in the House. Um, uh, and please do that for us. And my question is to you, you know, there are certain things in the Obamacare that are non-negotiable, like the pre-existence. Are there anything that you guys can talk to them about? Uh, uh, kind of like, okay, fine, we can let go of this uh, part, we can let go of this part, so that way we can keep the original health care. 
Yeah, you know, Omar, I mean, if this were a place that was a reasonable place with reasonable people, uh, absolutely, but this is not a reasonable place with reasonable people on the Republican side of the aisle. They don't really care about health care. They care about the tax cuts that they have in their bill. They care about checking a box. Uh, but yeah, there are a couple things that you know we really do need to do uh, around the Affordable Care Act to make it so it continues to work. Um, part of it was when we found there were 20 million people who needed health insurance. That's why they signed up for it. Uh, a lot of the healthy people that help balance the costs out, that make the actuarials work, didn't sign up. We got to figure out a way to deal with that. And I think uh, that is something that's a fair uh, criticism. And one of the ways you could also deal with that is by having a public option, which we tried to do originally, but it didn't make it through the process when the bill was created that would provide that competition so you can still have a place for people uh, who, who need health care. And um, it would be a much better a way of uh, making sure that the plan works overall. But there are some things we can do that'll make sure everyone still has access to health insurance that you have at the Affordable Care Act, but would deal with the actuarial issues that are fair and valid that are out there. But that's fixing a plan, not throwing it all away, kicking 24 to 30 million people off of uh, health insurance. And, uh, you know, really, this is more about part of their tax policy. They want to provide tax reform for their wealthiest uh, and the corporate masters they have. And, uh, you know, I wish we could have a reasonable conversation. But again, they don't care about isn't, making sure constituents have health care. Isn't that the thing that's really animating almost all of this, that there is a 3 percent Obamacare tax on, on investment income? Right now, investment income is typically taxed at a maximum 15 percent interest rate, uh, capital gains rate, or maybe it's 20 percent now, the capital gains rate. Um, and there's like this additional 3%. And so they're still not paying the 39% that all the rest of us who get a paycheck pay. Um, but the billionaires are outraged that they have to pay 3% on their, on their stock portfolios, uh, on the profits on the stock portfolios, in order to support health care for some, you know, average working Joe in Pennsylvania. God forbid. Uh, it seems to me like that's like 90%, you know, with all the money, all the effort, all these ads from these outside groups, uh, you know, coming from the Cokes and the Mercers and all these other, you know, uh, the right-wing billionaires. It, am I wrong in thinking that that's really what 95% of this is all about and why Paul Ryan is so foaming at the mouth about it, that it's really about the donor class? A absolutely, Tom, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Congressman uh, Mark Pocan is with us. We'll be back with more ear calls for him in just a moment. Stick around. Thank you.